And then this one you have a crater here, and this crater has to be uh, optimized uh, with the energy that you want to put and the number of pulses you want to make, yeah? And the spot size, you can have a spot size, large spot size, you of course you get a larger signal, then if you have a larger spot size, you lose compromise with the imaging resolution, yeah? So you have to do some uh, optimization work as in any, any, any other case. Um, and uh, some of those optimizations, you know, once you do the thing, you can get the, you know what the conditions are basically, you know, with the experience, yeah? So in this case, uh, we are using only mass uh, gold 197 and carbon 13 was used as an internal standard. So this is, uh, we are using an internal standard. So carbon is present in any organic material and carbon 14, uh, 13 and 12, 12 is about almost 98 percent and this is about abundance about 1.8. Yeah, so we are using carbon 13 signal. Uh, uh, so simultaneously, we are taking two, sig looking at two signals, gold 197 and carbon 13. Okay, simultaneously, you can have other elements too, same time. Yeah, uh, and then you get the ratio of that. So that we should take the ratio, we can correct or normalize to ablation variation. You know, sometimes some area they scoop a lot of. They dig a lot of stuff, soil, you know, if you make a trench, you know, you might in one place, you can scoop up <laughs> a lot of soil. It's a soft area, right? It is a hard area, you have to do a lot of work. So, so it's always variation, so we can do uh, those kind of a variation. So for the, first of all, uh, we, we ran mounting tape, 3M uh, tape, and it turned out to be uh, it's a pretty normal uh, signal, not much, and very background uh, signal, uh, so very little gold if it's there, yeah? And this is, and, uh, and remember, this is the distance of the linear ablation, and always on this axis uh, ratio between the, your analytical signal and carbon-13 signal, what you're using uh, for uh, internal standard. You know, in the afternoon, I'm going to talk about other uh, ones like teeth and bones and stuff like that. Uh, lichens, <laughs> our work that we did uh, in Antarctica. Those things we use different uh, internal standards. Yeah, and so remember that. So we little gold is present, and then uh, what you see here is a. Uh, um, the, the raw signal from ICP intensity counts per second and the distance. You start your laser, just argon only, no ablation, so nothing there. And, and then the ablation starts, signal rise, carbon 13, and ablation finish about 500 micrometers. Uh, and it's a batch of rise, and you can see the gold signal. And you see, nature, biological tissues, doesn't have the one that I like to see as analytical chemists, all these straight lines. <laughs> yeah? Biological variation is not straight line. If you are a physicist, they love straight lines. Biology, you don't have straight lines. Everybody is different. Yeah, you have 50, 60, 20 people, they're yeah, all different. Biological variation, yeah? <laughs> and these things, as you can see, uh, is uh, heterogeneously distributed on that fi uh, 500 micrometer. I see every time, not only this, everything, heterogeneously distributed. Some places you have high, some places you little. So you have, uh, this set of uh, slides shows rice under control, no gold nanoparticles, rice grown without uh, uh, gold nanoparticles. This is positively charged with cotton reamine, N, and this is a hydro uh, OH group. 
uh, again uh, neutral and this is C double OH group N uh, with uh, negative. So you can see they have different absorption properties. Uh, there's a little absorption in this particular one. Uh, this particular one you can see there are lots of absorption at, at one edge and there are some places where you have lots of them and IUNP3 on this one, it's a right shoot uh, in right at the middle. Okay, so we can see it absorb against the control sample. Then what we need to do is uh, we have to make uh, standards. This is another problem with uh, laser ablation work, no? And so you need to have a set of standards. Uh, this is a major problem with this uh, technique. And so what we do is we make our own uh, in-house standards using some cellulose. Uh, cellulose is the same material, yeah? We can get very good cellulose from specs industries. And we use that one, no, no gold added, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 5, 10, and 20 to 50 ppm. See this of suite of standards ranging from 0 0.1 to 50 ppm. In fact, you can see, uh, I don't know why this one happens, but you can see change in colors with the gold here. Yeah. Uh, this is strange, but, uh, uh, but you can see increasing uh, concentrations, yeah. And then uh, we, we ablate, you can see the ablation marks, for example. You can see, in when you took these pictures, yeah, you can see ablation marks, yeah, 500 micrometers about, or 500 or 1000 micrometer linear scan. So we ablate these things and take the average of it. And then you can get a calibration curve. And you can, on <coughs> this axis you have uh, gold concentration, gold concentration per gram of cellulose. Yeah, the gram of solutions. And then, uh, then you have uh, counts per second signal. And so this is the just in intensity of gold against the gold, uh, uh, gold concentration. And we get a pretty nice calibration curve. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, linear ones this time. Yeah, we, we had to get some calibration work. Yeah. And then if you do uh, normalize to carbon 13, uh, we get a little bit improvement of that the earlier one. Not much. Other one is also good. A uh, little improvement and we usually use the normalized one for all our work. Yeah? So we, so we have a set of standards and then we can calculate, for example, uh, uh, that's the five uh, calibration curves. Uh, so we get throughout very good the concentration detection limit about 0.01 uh, parts per million. Uh, about 10 ppb for gold, and then uh, if you do, uh, if you do uh, uh, duplicate horizontal line for this example, this is uh, uh, rice tissue, yeah, and there are uh, uh, vascular bundles, phloem and xylem, goes through that, and then we did uh, very close, that's about 50, not even 50, 10 micrometer distance, uh, two lines, and so you can get, in this one, you have pretty much uh, uh, linear ablation and kind of a, a very similar distribution. You have lots of them, and right at the middle, uh, a little bit high, and the, uh, this side of that edge, you have a, a, a same kind of bleed. So this is a uh, linear scan uh, across the, across the uh, shoot, yeah? And then uh, we looked at, uh, in this particular case, uh, we were looking at carbon, of course, and gold, of course, and zinc. Because zinc is a nutrient element. So it's a kind of a proxy element. You know, nutrients, you know, you have to uh, make cells. You need to have always zinc, yeah? To make cells, yeah? You have to have zinc. So that's a proxy element. So whether these things absorb on the same mechanism, yeah? So it's a proxy element. And you can see it's very, very much uh, follows the zinc pattern of gold. Yeah, uh -huh. the first time you get this kind of ab absorption uh, possibilities, yeah? Now we see that, yeah? And so what we do is then after that, we harvest these things so after initial work. And we take the shoots and the root. Uh, roots are very, very wiggly. Uh, this is a cartoon of that. Then we take uh, the bottom and top two samples. They are very tiny, very delicate. 
And this one is very particularly delicate, few cells actually, the root, and you take the top and, uh, and the bottom. And also we take the shoots, uh, shoots are, as you know, these are monocots, monocots. There are two types of plants, right, dicots and monocots. And all the grass, gra gramineous families are monocot, yeah. And so in this case, so what we do is, the first shoot is always curled, yeah. Uh, this is the trick. Uh, uh, you see there are inner sheath. This is the latest one and this is the outer sheath. This is the first one to grow, then the second leaf and the third leaf coming up. So we have to uncurl under the microscope and lay it <laughs> flat, yeah? So that's the kind of surgical thing. Uh, you had to do it very quickly and mount it. So once you do uncurl it, uh, we can get this outer sheath, middle sheath, and inner sheath. Uh, so you, you need to know a little bit of botany and stuff like that too. Uh, so these guys are uh, chemists, but they learn now botany. Yeah, they have to read articles. This is good. This is good. Uh, <laughs> and interdisciplinary work, right? And uh, then once you do that, I'll give you some examples of results. These are in this axis usually control and three type of uh, uh, charged particles, gold nanoparticles, three, two, one. This is positive, this is neutral, this is uh, negative. And you can see uh, this one is the bottom of the root, R for root, S for shoot. Then you have the top and bottom ablation and top and bottom ablation. So you have all these uh, things in this particular graph for comparison. <laughs> and you can see AUNP1, which is the negatively, uh, positively charged gold nanoparticles, uh, absorb uh, lots of them in root bottom. And as you go follow the, uh, and the root top, they are absorbing, you know, there's a concentration gradient, you know. The bottom you have a lot and concentration gradient is there, so the gold nanoparticles are absorbing. And when you go to AUNP3 type, it doesn't have much absorption as compared to AUNP1. And similarly, anything absorbed should be going into the leaves, right? Eventually, rice we eat, right? And we haven't done anything yet uh, on rice. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, it, it has a different way of translocation, that means uh, transportation, uh, in botany we call translocation, and that means you're starting from, uh, from, from root to uh, shoot to seed is translocation. And uh, you can see translocation happen in, in uh, lots of AUNP3. So there's different mechanisms after that, depending on the charge. You can absorb, but translocation is different. And so this we can see, and then you do this. Uh, yep, uh, you can. There are two slides. You can see the similar pattern, but not necessarily same concentrations. You know, these are different tissues. Yeah, <laughs> they do their own thing, right? It's just like eating. You know, go to lunch. You know, you eat about lots of uh, meat, uh, a little bit portion like that, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> it's not the thing in the biological thing. <laughs> and so you can see that uh, biological variation. Then here is the one that you can see. We, uh, this is after three months uh, exposure to this uh, thing. And it shows, uh, this is the root bottom. You have uh, AUNP3 is slot. Uh, and AUNP1 uh, is uh, comparatively less. You can see huge amount of gold uh, there after three months. Uh, long term experiment and it's got reverse what we saw uh, in the uh, short term experiments. Okay, but we do know they absorb, they depend on charge and depend on the exposure time. You know, for the first time we see that these things, yeah. Uh, and uh, then um, you take these sheets, uh, as I said, uncurl it and then we do a raster, sorry. Uh, a raster, you take any raster like that and then and we do spot ablation, you have a spot, a spot, 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 you know, 
with a very small rise. The trick is these are very, very tricky tissues. You know, they break. Yeah, rice tissue. You know, it's not a young tissue. This is the hard part. And then we take uh, multiple points, uh, rastering. So it will be go like this, be laser, laser, like that. And then you get multiple points. And then we use those points, then normalize to carbon 13. And then you get the calibration. Uh, using calibration, we can find out each place's concentration. And then after that, uh, we need to plot those things into Excel file. And then we have to make a bio image of that. Yeah, that's quite a lot of work. Uh, because we do by still manually. Because uh, I like the manual way because we know the black box. <laughs> Yeah, my student, I like to get my students to know, I don't really like these black boxes. You know, you put stuff, comes out, no good, right? You don't know next time what's happening. And also, you don't know how, how the data generated. Although it takes time, they can double check every time a step, right? Yeah, so we do it manually, but it'll take a little time. It's good for them because they learn these techniques how to do that. And then you get these kind of bio images, yeah? And let me show you this particular one. Um, this is the platen tissue. You can see here a vascular bundle. Vascular bundle contain both plium, which takes out food, right? and xylem, which takes uh, water and stuff like that, right? So that's co collectively that organ is called vascular bundle. And then you have a special um, organ or set of uh, cells called meso mesophile, and this is called vascular tract. So if you look at this particular outer sheet, this is the first one to come up on the rice plant from the seed, yeah? And you can see there's gold. Uh, not much in this particular case, but there's certainly gold compared to other tissue. Mesophyll doesn't have. I think um, the vascular bundle brings these things into the system. Yeah? There are several mechanisms. Uh, we have a paper, you can read that one we are suggesting, but it's coming there. Yeah? And the, the darker the spot, you see more gold there. And here you don't have much gold. And then there's another bundle, you can see the similar thing happening. So it's pretty nice.